what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another Giants update video. The Giants made two more signings today. One of them, in fact, was this morning, right as I put out my video about the Afidi um, signing the defensive end from Minnesota. I'm not going to try and pronounce his last name again. Like, literally, as I put that video out, they made another signing in Mike Glennon. Um, to be assumably our backup quarterback, which means Colt McCoy's probably gone. And then more recently, literally like 10, 15 minutes ago, new signing, the Giants and Kyle Rudolph have come to terms to a two-year, $16 million deal. And that's the one I'm going to get into first, and then we're going to backtrack our way to talk about Mike Glennon. So like I said, former Viking uh, tight end Kyle Rudolph. Wow, we're, we're getting a couple players from the Vikings this year. You know, first Afidi, now Kyle. You got to wonder, maybe did they talk to each other before they went and signed with us? I don't know. They do play on opposite sides of the ball, but don't completely put it out of your mind. But Kyle Rudolph, you know, he's a pretty consistent tight end in the league. He's more... He's a more of a traditional tight end, so to speak, you know what I mean? He's really good in pass blocking. In fact, I think he's one of the better tight ends when it comes to pass blocking in the league. You know, he's, he can catch the ball, but it's not like he's that Evan Ingram type, that Kyle Pitts type, so to say. He's a lot more traditional of a tight end. In fact, he is a better version, and this is a, really an oversimplification, but I'm using it um, for Giants fans that maybe don't know about Kyle Rudolph, but I think a lot of y'all already do. But he's he's basically what Levine Toyolo is, or just way better at it. Once again, Kyle Rudolph has been one of the most consistent tight ends in the NFL throughout his entire career in the league. He's been with the Vikings for the entirety of that career, I want to say around 10 years or so. And he's never really been a splash tight end when it comes to receiving. Once you know, he's always been that guy in there for blocking sets and whatnot. I think the most receiving yards he ever got in his career was 840 back in 2016, which is pretty good. But you know, he generally seems to average like three, four hundred yards, maybe the occasional 500 yards over his season. I'm gonna just toss up those stats right there um, per football, pro football reference. And he's pretty good with catching the ball as well. You know, he almost always has at least 60%. If you were to average that out, it's gonna be like 68.1% catch percentage on his entire career once again really good or that that's a pretty reliable target right there but Kyle Rudolph comes in and I don't even really need to talk about him as a player because once again I think a lot of you know who he is I'm gonna say this right now one of our tight ends are gonna go now some of y'all call me crazy back when we restructured Levine Toyolo and kept him when I said that this is a sign that we're gonna get rid of Evan Ingram my thought process then was that we restructured Toyolo because he was gonna be the second tight end and Caden Smith was gonna be the first which means Evan Ingram is out of here now my thoughts shifted a little bit I still think an Evan Ingram, Evan Ingram trade is still very much possible in fact I would love for this to mean that we're done with the Evan Ingram experiment and you know the Giants they're looking for a trade partner they possibly already have a trade partner in mind they're gonna sign that and put it through that's what I'm hoping for because in that case right there, Kyle Rudolph, Levine Toyolo, and Caden Smith are all way more traditional tight ends than Evan Ingram are, and it's just a sign of the Giants saying we're kind of done with looking for that, you know, that receiver playing tight end kind of speak. That that is Evan Ingram, and they just want to get somebody that probably fits the scheme a bit more. Like look at Jason Witten, right? Jason Witten ain't no receiving tight end. He just he's just a really you know, he's just a really good all-rounder type of guy. That's what Kyle Rudolph was. Levine Toyolo is more, supposed to be more so a blocking guy and then the receiving guy is Caden Smith so what I hope is that this means Evan Ingram is gone and it would help free up some cap space the actual contract details aren't out yet it's just that he's making 16 mil over two years we don't know what the cap hit is this year but if Evan Ingram is traded we free up six million dollars more and and you know that way we still have a little bit of shot at Kenny Galladay and so this could mean though that maybe Caden Smith is gone it could mean that Levine Tololo is gone but we're not rolling into the season with four tight ends. I'll, I'll say that. And, and real quick before I get into the Mike Glennon news, because I mentioned Kenny Galladay, Adam Schefter literally tweeted like six, six minutes ago that Kenny also met with the Bears at one point. Of course, he's still scheduled to meet with us tonight. Everybody's patiently awaiting to see what happens if he's going to walk out of the Giants room with a deal, with a contract, with him being a New York Giant. But... Um, that's surprising. That's not something we knew. Now we know he met with the Bears. We know he spoke with Joe Burrow from Cincinnati, and it's the Giants. So I'm still hoping the Giants are the front runners. That's what it looks like. And well, just on to the Mike Glennon news. He's going to be our new backup quarterback. Let's talk about that a little bit. And now here we are with the 31-year-old 6'7", 225-pounder quarterback 
The new backup for the New York Giants, Cole McCoy, is officially gone at this point. I don't see us re-signing him. I will say this. When I looked at Mike Glenn, I looked at his measurements like I just spoke of. Uh, that's very similar measurements to DJ because DJ, I think, is like 6'5", 6'6", 230 or something like that. So, I, I don't know. Keep that in mind. You know, it's a backup QB that's very similar in terms of build to Daniel Jones. And, well, Mike Glennon has basically been a career journeyman at this point in his career. I think this is his fifth team um, that he's played for in the NFL. He was drafted by the Buccaneers back in 2013. Then he played with the Bears for a little bit. Then he was the, with uh, Arizona. And, and I think he was with the Jaguars. There, there may be another team in there somewhere. But this is like his fifth team that he's playing for in the NFL. Career backup. So... You know what I was looking for when I was looking for a backup QB? One of the things I was looking for, don't be a direct competition to DJ. Otherwise, you're going to mess up his mental state. Glennon ain't direct competition, so that's check. The second box, you have to actually do your job as a backup quarterback, which means um, you have to be able to step in and, you know, play the game. You know, if the, if the starter goes out and the, the starter can't be healthy for some reason, it's your job to stay healthy, come in, and run the offense. I think Glennon, I think he's pretty uh, capable of doing that. In fact, I think he's even more capable of doing that than Colt McCoy was. Um, call me crazy, I think Mike Glennon might be better than Colt McCoy, so in a way, you could look at this move as an upgrade at the back quarterback position. But there is one thing I think he might be lacking in when you compare him to Colt McCoy, and you know, I could be completely off base about this if I am, I'd be very happy. I think Cole McCoy is a better teacher and a better mentor than Mike Glennon is. Uh, McCoy, at this point in his career, has mentored quite a few quarterbacks, and we saw that he did, in my opinion, a good job with DJ this year. And I always bring up the example of what he did in the offseason with helping to set up offseason workouts down in Texas. He was not only good for DJ, he was good for the entire offense, and he was really a team player. Glennon, you don't really hear anything like that about him. Now, granted, you don't hear anything bad about him either. You know what I mean? It's kind of just like a quiet story there. But I never really heard of Mike Glennon mentoring anybody. Um, you know, he was in Jacksonville. I don't think he really mentored Gardner Minshew. Or if he did, uh, you didn't really hear about it. He was in Arizona. But what year was he in Arizona, actually? That's that's a good question. I don't know if he was in Arizona the same time as uh, Kyler Murray was. Let me check that. So he was in Arizona when Josh Rosen was there, which doesn't exactly bode great for us. And I mean, yeah, in, in general, he's an upgrade in terms of a player. And I do think he could do better than Cole McCoy. But in terms of teach AD, teaching DJ something and mentoring him, I don't necessarily think he is. But maybe this is a good sign because maybe the Giants are saying, yo, we're at the point with Daniel Jones in his career where he no longer needs a mentoring type quarterback to be his backup. He just needs somebody that could step in if something goes wrong. And if that's the case, I'm quite excited. But you guys let me know what you think. Put your thoughts down below. Like, share, subscribe. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.